All right, guys, here we have a very hot garage. Boy, it is warm and muggy today, and it's gonna be even hotter this weekend. <clears throat> but I'm not complaining because it's not raining, so it can be as hot as it wants, don't really care. Got a big fan running, so ugh, there we go. Anyway, 2002 EasyGo TXT Gas. This one here is a, well, let's see, what's the complaint on this one? The complaint on this one is that it's weak after it runs for a while, it smells like it's got a fuel leak. It smells like it's flooding. Uh, this is all according to the customer and based off of what they had told me. My first assumption is valves and possibly a dirty carburetor. So we're gonna jump into it and see what's going on. So I know the noise of the fan can be a little bit annoying, but I need it because there's no air conditioning or climate control out here. So too bad if you don't like it. Okay, so let me demonstrate, or at least let me crank the engine over. You can kind of hear what this is doing. I don't know if you could pick up on that at all, but you can hear how it sounds a little almost like it's getting too much fuel see to me that sounds like it's valves oh jesus well it's not really dirty but we're going to change it because it looks like it's never been done looks like we're missing a whole bunch of hardware inside so here's the inside of the air box there's supposed to be two nuts in here at least with flattened lock washers and it's missing a whole bunch of stuff so this right here is your spark arrestor plate. This is what keeps any backfires from exploding into the space. Kind of keeps it under control. Spark arrestor. Let's turn the key on. That's half throttle. Oh, look at this. It looks like we are dripping fuel. Okay, I think we need to get this, uh, let's get this whole assembly off here and then we'll fart around with the valves. The customer did say he smelled gas, thought there was a fuel line leak somewhere, so let's get this apart. Oh, great. Okay, so that's the wrong piece of hardware for that. Wow, this thing is all sorts of screwed up. Missing all kinds of correct hardware. Somebody had replaced that recently, it looks like. Wow, look at this. This was not put back together correctly at all. Wow. Nobody wanted to be a golf cart mechanic. Let's take this off, get it out of our way. Where are we leaking at here, little guy? Definitely running off of one cylinder. Oh, it's puking out the overflow on the carburetor. Okay. So at least we know the overflow on the carburetor is working. It was coming out of that hose that was running down there along the starter generator. Okay, looks like we're going to start with the carb cleaning on this one. You guys are used to seeing me doing carburetor cleanings like crazy. At least any of you that have been watching my channel for any length of time and have subscribed and you'll watch when I release. I typically like to release a video a week so that way I don't get overwhelmed with editing videos and not having enough content for you guys to watch. So how are you guys doing today? You doing good? Great. Glad to hear it. 
I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Okay, let's, uh, let's cut that. All right, let's get this off. Yeah, I know. Electrician, linemen's players are not meant to be blah, 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 blah. But it's what I grabbed and it's what I'm gonna use, so sorry. Get this off. Pop off our throttle. Slide that down and then it should pop right off. You don't really have to slide that down to get that off, but sometimes it's easier. All right, let's see if we can get this off with the starter generator in the way. Yes, we can, because it looks like somebody has already done that. Well, good news is the gaskets are good. So they're good. Look at this. This is gasket maker. Yes. Somebody put RTV silicone gasket maker on here instead of getting the correct gasket. Boy, oh boy. Some people should not be working on golf carts. Okay, we'll have to clean this up. All right, let's pop this open here, see what's inside. I have a feeling we're gonna get a nice surprise, Clark. A real nice surprise. You see what I'm doing? Oh, there we go. I'll get you in shot here in a moment, folks. I just gotta get this drained. What's the story? There's really nothing in there. Why is this puking out the overflow? Yeah, it's clean. Mostly. I mean, there's some little trashy crap in there, but it's... There's no water. See, there's oil in the bottom of this pan. This little jug here, and it's... The oil is diluting into the gasoline, and there's nothing floating other than the little floater chunks that I just took out of there. Oh, the float valve stuck. All right, you see that little, that silvery bit up in there? That little metal shaft going up and down? That whole assembly is what is supposed to be going up and down, and it's not, it's just a spring-loaded plunger. So what was happening was the float was not shutting off, was not shutting the fuel flow off. And it was cause, oh, there was a tr some trash up in there. So when trash gets crammed in between this float valve assembly and that tube, which is the basically the fuel inlet tube that the fuel line hooks up to, it'll cause the float valve to stick open in the case of which it was doing because it was puking out the side of the the, uh, uh, the overflow. I need help with the big words. I mean, the carb's not blocked. It does work, at least from what we can see here. Okay, now it's working like it should. Let me see if I can show you this. All right, so you see that, see that little silvery bit in the middle there? See how it's going up and down? There. See, when the valve itself bottoms out into the, its seat, and then what'll happen is when the if the bowl overfills, the spring-loaded plunger that's in there allows the float to go all the way up. I know the camera wasn't focusing. I'm sorry. I can't really help that. So yeah, that's that was the main issue with this thing. Watch the rubber O-rings if you can help it. Try not to get any carburetor cleaning on those, cleaner on those. If you can help it, I. Repeat, if you can help it.
don't freak out because I'm using an electric ratchet on that. It's not going to hurt anything. But what I don't understand is why the use of RTV gasket maker? I don't understand why they did that. If you put it together correctly, you don't need it. Like I said, some people should just not. They probably didn't have this gasket. How much you want to make a bet? Let me get a razor blade and scrape that off. We'll put the right gasket in there. Okay. Gasket, carburetor to air cleaner. Easy go, four cycle gas. Let's see. Carb dash zero zero three or zero three three. RTV gasket maker on this side too, or is it just not, was not assembled correctly at all either, because I got screws that are, oh yeah, look at it, it's all over the place. Sticking through everything on this. Spacer missing. Well, at least it'll be correct this time. Talk about half-assed. They were missing a nut, I bet, and they probably couldn't figure out where the hell it went. I mean, look at this. This is stuck on here. It's all right. What I'll do is I'll grab this like so. I know, the lineman's players are not meant for this. Whoop, too, wrong way. Get them started good. Make sure they go in all the way. Don't have to go cranking these down too hard. All right, so when you have the spark arrestor off, this is what it will look like. You'll see you have the two studs that come out of the motor and then you have the two studs with the spacer nut already built into the, the bolt. Uh, it's basically machined into it. And these two are, these two, all they do is bolt the airbox to the carburetor. These two studs that come out of the motor with these nuts on here hold everything to the motor. And then the spark arrestor just goes on there. And the reason for the, these studs being, or these special bolts being the way they are, so there's a gap between back here, I don't know if you can see it, but my finger's back behind the spark arrestor so the engine can breathe. The important thing on this setup is that the carburetor and airbox are installed correctly. The spark arrestor, you don't really need both nuts if you don't have them, and I'm not putting that, that other janky 10 millimeter nut on there because I, for one, just don't trust it. All right, let's see if we have a Perfectly good operating. Ha, ah, you probably thought I forgot about the fuel filter, didn't you? You were probably thinking it. I know it. Oh, he's not going to put it on. He's going to get gas all over the place. No, I remembered. Oh, you know what I did forget, though? I forgot to put the fuel line on. the thingamajigger there for the carburetor. Not to worry, folks. Not to worry. It's right here. I can grab it. I'm not concerned with the fuel being dirty because, like I said, there was no junk in there. It was fairly clean. Now, EasyGo calls for you to do a valve adjustment on a cold engine. Cold engine. We had some older easy goes, okay? 
not much older. I mean, they weren't two cyclers, obviously. They were this generation. Actually, uh, the generation right, mm, let's say, what were they? They were 96s. No, I'm sorry, they were marathons. They were 94s, okay? Let's not, uh, let's not lose that gasket. Pour half of these screws down into the engine. I don't want to spill oil all over everything. Sometimes this gasket will stick to the motor. You just pick it off and stick it back in the slot. You don't want this to leak. This is the valve cover gasket. All right. And our marathons were beat hard. They were used and abused and put away wet. Okay. So throughout the years of working at the golf course, the only way we were able to get these engines to run and to run good was if we adjusted them to six thousandths. That was the only way we could get those engines to run. So because of that, it has stuck with me to go to six thousandths. It's what I've done. Easy go, the manual calls for not six thousandths, but it calls for four thousandths. So if you want to adjust your engine to four thousandths, go right ahead. And the book calls to do it on a cold engine. Not a warm engine, not a hot engine, a cold engine. This engine is a little too warm, so I'm going to let it sit here for about 20 minutes to cool off with the cover off here. I'll throw a paper towel over it to keep any flying crap out and just let it air cool for about 20 minutes and that should be good because I didn't run it long and that's why I didn't run it long. So, all right, we'll be right back. We're going to adjust these valves on this cart to five thousandths because I did notice quite a bit of smoke coming out of it. 0 0.006 is what I usually do, but like I said, the book calls for 0 0.004. I've had good luck, as I've explained, and with 0 0.006. All right, so we got our 10 millimeter wrench. We have a flathead screwdriver, which I'm just gonna wipe off so we don't get any crud in the motor. And we're gonna start here on our driver's side. It's gonna roll it over, and what you want is the, you want the cam to be pointing straight down. See, that one's good. We're gonna actually go per cam now. We'll go through and see as we uh, approach our cams pointing straight down, we'll go to the next valve, which now we're gonna be at our intake over here, and that one's tight. Okay, so let's open that one up a little. I'm gonna also, I was gonna crack that one loose, but I wanna see what it is before I mess with it. All right, so we're pointing straight down. Frickin' flies are unbelievable. I'm gonna put our screwdriver right here. So yeah, notice I didn't do a compression test. Why didn't I do a compression test, you're asking? Because I've been doing this long enough, I know the sound of funky valves, that's why. If you want to know this information before you start pulling and messing with this stuff, get a good compression tester. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, they're about $30, $40, they're not expensive. Okay. So that's good. You're better to tighten these towards, there we go. Pulling towards you, it's a little, it's just a little bit easier. All right, so let's roll over now to, we're gonna do this one. It's good. The drag on it is perfect. And I bet you this intake right here is open, oh yeah. So you want to be able to see how I'm bending the feeler gauge. There we go. Okay, so now we got our 
And you want to feel just a little bit of resistance when you pull it out. That's how you know you've gotten the right amount. And then I'll hold back on the screwdriver in the opposite direction that I'm tightening just a little bit so the screw doesn't turn on me. And the exhaust valves are fine. Nine times out of 10, the exhaust valves are gonna be okay. It's not usually those, it's usually the intake valves that go out of adjustment. That's why we didn't adjust those, so they're good. Put these in. I've had a couple of people ask me why I don't use a torque wrench on a lot of this stuff. When I rebuild engines, I do. But after a while, you just get to know how, how like the torque that you need feels. You just feel it in your, it's muscle memory. Okay, so let's see what's gonna happen now when we crank this engine over. It should fire up and be a lot better and stronger. Damn shifter. That was substantially better, wasn't it? It's still smoking like a dirty whore though. I'm gonna tighten that starter generator belt up too. It's a little loose. And I don't know why, but I can never find my 9 16 wrenches. This thing here, I think it's got some, it's got some bad rings in it. It might be time for a rebuild on this one. Nine sixteenths works best on these, but 14 millimeter will also work. Because there's two 916 nuts on this adjuster. And they work together, you jam them up together, and they keep the adjuster from slopping all over the place. Okay, that's a lot better. There's that typical easy go sound. So that pretty much concludes this one, guys. This one is done. I'm just gonna pick up my tools and get this thing out of here. Thanks for watching, as always. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Be sure to ring the bell icon so you're notified anytime I upload a new video to the channel. Be sure to check the video's description for links to products I use every single day, and also my Amazon store link is down there, website, Facebook, and all other social media pages. So, and as always, guys, until next time, we will see you in the next video.